In this video, I'm going to show you how I draw clothing and folds. We're going to draw two examples, one tight clothing that conforms closely to the underlying anatomy, and then we'll put the same character into a suit, and I'll show you how I draw looser clothing with larger, deeper folds. Be sure to stay tuned right to the end, because I've thrown in a bonus lesson that will help you out if you want to draw characters like Batman or Moon Knight. If you enjoyed this video, please help me out by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to know what tools I use to draw my comic work, take a look in the description below. All right, before we get started with the main lessons, I wanted to just quickly on a simple drawing show you where I start folds and how they radiate from uh, pinch points in the body. Underneath the arms, where you bend your limbs, those kinds of places are places where clothing folds and, and bunches up. So you want to make sure that you're not just drawing random folds throughout the body, you're drawing them coming from places where the clothing naturally bunches. And so I've got his shoulder under his arm, I've got his wrist, and then in his crotch area and his knees. So that's just a quick example of where I place my folds so that they don't just end up willy-nilly all over the body with no rhyme or reason. So now that we've got that done, I've drawn in this figure. This is just a, a loose sketch. I'm going to lighten it up quickly. And now that it's lightened, I'm drawing a shirt on his, his body. It's very, very important that I start with actual anatomy and an actual form that makes sense. I don't have it drawn in tightly because I don't want to fight my final drawing and the folds that go on top of it, but I do want to make sure that that is all there, all the anatomy is in where it needs to be, and everything makes sense before I decide to start trying to put clothing on top of it. If you just start with clothes and you don't draw the underlying forms properly, you'll end up with something that really has no resemblance to, to proper anatomy, and it doesn't look like it's, it's actually clothing sitting on a human being it'll look like it's just clothing drawn flat on a piece of paper all right so now that i've got a shirt in i'm going to go in and i'm drawing folds radiating out from his shoulder that's a, a pinch point underneath there I'm drawing a seam over his shoulder. It's important to know where seams are naturally in clothing in order to be able to draw them properly. It's not very complex to see where the seams are in your own shirt and your own pants, and that adds a, a great deal of realism. I'm making sure when I draw in my folds that I'm bearing in mind where my anatomy is underneath it, and what I'm really doing, it's, it's a lot of negative space drawing. So I'm drawing the shadows instead of the actual shape itself. And that's how you get folds drawn in with shadowing that makes sense. It can be a little bit of a confusing thing to get the hang of at first, but once you understand it and you understand that you are, are, are drawing interconnecting negative shapes and how they work, it really, really starts to flow quickly. I'm drawing some very thin folds. This shirt is very, very tight to his body. I wanted something that looks like a, a really tight kind of athletic shirt almost this is something i run into all the time drawing comics is is characters that have clothing but it still needs to look heroic and it still needs to be something that shows off you know the heroic anatomy so i end up drawing clothing like this absolutely all the time and a big key to doing this you'll notice that all of my lines are very thin and very sharp I'm trying to also not use any curves. I'm using jagged lines that have some shape to them. They arc up and arc back down in hard lines and it gives it a bit of a, more of a dynamic look. Also, when I draw in these folds on the, under, on the underarm here, I'm really trying to bear in mind where my lighting is coming from and I need to make sure that my overall form rounds properly. So I can't just draw folds and then not take into account that the overall arm is lit. So I'm blocking in some of the shadow from his torso here, his stomach, continuing the folds across his stomach. And as I draw, I'm 
kind of jumping maybe a little bit more than I would if I were just drawing straight anatomy, but I'm trying to bear in mind where my folds are. I'm making sure to keep those open and keep those integrated into the anatomy that I'm drawing and using negative space to make sure that that all works together. And again, very, very thin lines. I don't want to go with anything too thick for it or anything too deep for any of these these folds it would completely change the nature of the shirt and unfortunately folds are one of those things it's some things like everything in art obviously is an art it's not a science and so when you draw anatomy there's the right way to do it but then there are also so many ways to stylize it and folds are very very similar and they were actually a very difficult thing for me to learn for a long time because there's just so much room for error and so much interpretation so you ultimately really do have to find your own way when you're doing it. Now I'm going ahead, I'm drawing folds on his hand. I just wanted to give a couple little wrinkles on the back of that glove there. And as I do it, I can see, and I, I realized this in a second drawing it, I've gone a little bit too heavy with the, the shapes above the shadow point there. And it, I'm fighting it and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. And there now I'm erasing and just keeping those folds in where the shadow is, and it's much more effective that way. So you really have to bear in mind, just like any other form of lighting, that your folds conform to your lighting, and they're very, very small shapes. They can be very small shapes, and if you want that effect, you need to make sure that they don't carry too far into the light. I'm drawing him his color. I'm just giving it a texture just to give it a, a thicker weave look. And now I'm drawing in a uh, secondary line is just another seam line underneath. Uh, I really like using uh, seams and secondary lines all over the place while I'm drawing on all sorts of different things. It's, it's a really effective way. It's something I learned early on. It was actually a colorist that pointed out how effective that can be, just doubling up lines on things, and it really, really is. So I'm, I'm sketching in his pants. I have long ago remembered where the basic shapes on, on these sorts of clothing, you know, pants, that kind of thing, go. So it's it's really no reference required for any of this and really the point of this video for everything that I'm doing here I'm not using any reference at all for any of this because the idea is to be able to draw folds on your own without reference and make something look believable it doesn't need to look real as a matter of fact I think for a lot of times for comics it's a detriment for something to look too real you want it to look it's it's a cartoon it's cartooning and it's ironically or strangely much more immersive for people reading a comic when uh, something is more a product of your own mind than just a collection of photographs. For me, that really takes me out of the story quite a bit. So I've got a, a shadow along that side of his leg, on the right side of his leg there. I'm drawing that in. I'm making sure to break it up where I have folds intersecting. I've got a, cash on, a shadow under his crotch. And the folds that I'm drawing are just connecting those two shapes. I want to make sure that uh, I'm not going again too far into the light. I'm keeping these, the pants have a larger fold density or width than the shirt. They're a thicker material. And quickly, I want to point out that what I did right there, I erased out part of my shadow so I could draw that fold in. And the dimension of the fold is really just described by cutting into the shadow shape and then shadowing out from it slightly. That's a, a trick that you can use for folds and for all sorts of things. And it's really, it's a negative space drawing technique. The folds on his left leg, I guess it would be his right, our left. You'll notice that I've, I've got uh, some mild anatomy drawn in in his leg and the folds are, are intersecting, intersecting through. And that's, again, using negative space is something that is, in my opinion, really the only effective way of drawing folds with, with shadow. Now, I want to quickly show you how folds interconnect. And this is something that is, is a very, very simple thing to understand. They zigzag across each other in a really simple pattern. And so I've drawn some heavier shapes going up to lighter shapes, almost like a fade toward light. And you can see there, I'm just drawing the, the basic lines that, that describe the way that folds go. And they always do this. No matter what fold, folds take, they always interlock with each other in exactly that way. And understanding that will take you a very, very long way to having your folds look much more realistic. So now I've got another figure drawn in. It's essentially the same figure as the first one. And I'm going to draw him in a suit. Suits obviously don't conform to the body anywhere near as closely as 
a, a tight fitting shirt would. And so it's a, it's a really different type of fold and a type, a different type of a, uh, an approach. And frankly, much more difficult, certainly more difficult for me. And there are places while I'm drawing this, you'll see where I struggle and I erase and it, it, it's a push and pull. Unfortunately, having drawn these kinds of things so many times, there aren't the very, very obvious simple benchmarks that you get with something like anatomy, where I know exactly where the bicep's going to be. I know exactly where all these things are going to be. And so there's a lot less guesswork. With clothing folds, I know the rules behind them, and I've studied them quite a bit, but getting them to really work and make a cohesive whole, still it can be a bit of a challenge for me after all these years. And so it's something you really need to give yourself some patience with. And also, these sorts of larger folds, I would not be adverse at all to using a little bit of reference. And there are times when I'll do it. I prefer when, when I'm drawing comics to be able to obviously do this stuff without using reference at all because it's, it's much more efficient. But, but you really have to approach it in a way that, that gives you the result that you're looking for. So now I'm drawing the other side of his jacket here. Uh, his shoulders don't conform to the, the shape of his shoulder anywhere near as closely as they do on the tighter shirt. And the folds themselves actually create much more of the profile of the figure. So you see a lot more bump out for the, where the folds push out from the body. And that's uh, something you really don't see anywhere near as drastically on the, the first figure that we did where you'll get a little bit of a bump out, uh, just very, very small along the profile on something like a suit that's much more pronounced. And for this one, I've given him a belt, obviously, wearing a suit, a belt's much more appropriate. And I'm just blocking in the major places where my folds go. And truthfully, if this is where I left it and I didn't really use lighting, uh, this would be a much easier process for me. So the folds that I'm drawing here are much deeper and darker and more pronounced. I'm giving him a cast shadow under his collar just to pop it. And now I'm radiating folds out from the natural choke points, just like on the other one, but they're just larger shapes. shadowing under his arm and drawing in folds along that that ridge the round down toward the light and I'm, I'm just what I'm doing is interlocking the kinds of shapes I'm using a little bit more variation and that kind of variation is something you learn really from study but I'm using the same basic shapes that I, I showed just a moment ago in the quick example to the side. Bit of a cast shadow from his tie. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw the other side of his body, the other side of his suit. You'll notice, hopefully, my shapes are not just rounded or single direction shapes. They jag one way and another, and I try to use something of a line of beauty, but a bit more of a hard edged version of that. And it gives me, it gives me folds that are harder and a little bit more uh, dynamic looking, I think. I wish I, I knew a better term to describe <laughs> what I mean, but I find that folds that are, that are too round can just look very soft and doughy and your character can start to look a little bit soft. It's essentially a tube, that arm. So I've drawn shadow all along the underside of that tube and I've got folds kind of coming out from it. And I've got a suit mostly drawn in. Some of his lower shirt, I've got some folds quickly thrown in there. And none of this is realistic. And I'm sure it would look vastly different if I was using reference. But again, the point is to be able to do this and make it look convincing enough from your head. And it gives it a style. And I think a dynamic feel that you... And you just, you don't get from, from pure photo reference. Cast shadow under his hand. Now I'm just going to quickly draw in some anatomy just to fill out his hand. And complete my shadow pattern along that arm. Otherwise it would have looked a little bit empty. And we're going to move on to the pants. 
Same kind of a concept that we had with the other pants. These ones are just a little bit deeper in the folds and it's not quite as conforming to the body. I would say the material is probably about the same density, but. And the folds that I've drawn here right now, you can see I've started out with something that was working and I filled it in and I've kind of killed it. So I'm going to erase that in a moment. And also I've drawn a seam along the front of his leg. I, I did this in the, the other drawing also. I want to point out that when I draw a seam, I'll draw up to it and then I'll leave a space and I'll let that space, it's a negative space technique. It creates a ridge of light and it's a very, very effective thing for so many things, certainly for clothes. It's something I use absolutely every single time I draw clothes because it just works so well. And you can see that I haven't actually drawn a line down the center of his pants. What I've done is drawn a shadow from it and just ended my shapes that are leading into it to give it a bit of a light. I'm going to give him a nice dark belt here. Just some line weight on the, the buckle. I gave it a bit of a, a kick of light where the belt rounds in the buckle. I'm going to go ahead and shadow the inside of his leg, get out the last of my folds. I forgot <laughs> to put my, my um, seam on that leg, so I'm drawing it in afterwards. It's, it's fine, though, because I, I can still finish up to it. All right, so now quickly, as I finish this one, I want to just show you, in so much as I can, with a couple of simple shapes, the kinds of shapes that I like to use that give me the effect that I'm looking for um, and so I, I don't end up with something that's very doughy. So here we go. I draw in jagged shapes like that, and I'm creating a bit of a shadow in there just by making it thicker inside that pocket. And all these shapes, they don't go straight. They all have jagged triangle kind of shapes to them. Now I'm going to go ahead and just accentuate that seam just a little bit more. And there we go. So now I have one final lesson that I wanted to throw into this video. This is something that I use all the time for characters like Moon Knight or Batman, or really any character that has a cape. Uh, and I get asked about this quite a bit, so I wanted to show you exactly how it's done, and it is incredibly simple. As I go over the body, the folds take a distinct shape that I use every single time, and I just connect a bunch of those shapes together to create the overall folded look. And so... I use a line of beauty for my shape. I don't just come up straight round with it. And then when I come up to the top, the shape that I use is always the same. Just get that connected up a little bit more. And so this is the shape that I use to round the, the top of a cape or that kind of cloth pattern every single time. It's amazing how versatile that one shape can be. And if you make sure that you randomize the, the size of, of the drapery that goes over the shoulder uh, enough, that one shape on the top portion of it works every time to give you the effect you're looking for. I've got one other tip that I wanted to throw in. This is something that someone showed me a long, long time ago. And it is such a quick and easy way to get drapery looking convincing. So I draw a squiggle down the page where I want the drapery, and then I just connect upward from it, and you get something that looks absolutely convincing like drapery, and it takes you absolutely no time at all. It's very, very easy. And then for the center of my cape, I'm just drawing in my interconnecting lines, and they just zigzag through, they interlock. And that really is all there is to it before there's shadow. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, please, again, leave them in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.